as yet another example of North Belfast's innate sectarian DNA, but rather a symptom of the failure of our own political system to properly address the whole problem of sectarianism within our society. Indeed, the question should be asked whether the DUP, uh, Sinn Féin, Axis, really wants to address this fault line of sectarianism within our politics. And even if they do, do they have the capacity together to address it? Uh, since 2009, we're still waiting on an agreed CSI uh, strategy. The issue of contentious parades is not an issue for North Belfast alone. It is a universal issue for the whole of the North that cannot be dodged. It lies at the dark heart of our history and our division. What Black Saturday threw up, Mr. Chairman, in stark terms was the continued need to have a system of regulation for parades under the Parades Commission. Black Saturday was not just a serious outbreak of toxic sectarianism, it was also a concerted, unified, DUP orange assault on the Parades Commission to exercise its lawful authority as the independent regulator for parades throughout uh, Northern Ireland. Remember, uh, Mr. Chairman, that this parade was preceded by a public letter to the Secretary of State viciously attacking the Parades Commission itself. None other than our own First Minister, Peter Robinson, co-signed the letter giving the bandsmen and marchers on Black Saturday extraordinary encouragement to carry out a blanket defiance of the determination of the Parades Commission regarding their conduct of that <coughs> march and the playing of what was supposed to be sacred music. That determination was completely and deliberately breached, Mr. Chairman, by all the participant bands and their host lodges. What an extraordinary, irresponsible and partisan act by our First Minister. No wonder then that the bandsmen and their supporters felt that they had a license to freely uh, and willfully act and to act with impunity. No wonder that the Young Conway Volunteer Band felt emboldened to defy its ban on participation in the parade. In the aftermath, Mr. Chairman, of this appalling behaviour, worse was to come as the DSD Minister Nelson McCoslin attempted a rear guard action to defend the gross misbehaviour of the bandsmen and their supporters. He described this appalling misbehaviour as civil disobedience. His defence of Black Saturday brought himself and his office, and indeed his party, into disrepute. And we as a party moved a no-confidence motion in the Assembly against him. Sinn Féin were shamed by the SDLP into supporting this motion which although it fell, was necessary to highlight the need for standards in ministerial office. If we had not acted, Mr. Chairman, against Nelson McCoslin, Sinn Féin would have hidden behind its non-aggression pact with the DUP. This was important to try and salvage some sort of integrity for the politics of the Assembly. And Mr. Chairman, I think we need to pose the question where are we now? First of all, Mr. Chairman, the Parades Commission survives and despite its problems is still in place and should remain in place to act as an independent regulator for parades. The PSNI have made it plain that they do not want this role given back to the police service. There is no chance of there being a political agreement to set up an alternative independent regulatory body. Mr. Chairman, I think it is timely uh, to remind at uh, this conference that at this very hour, this very hour, a parade is taking place in Belfast, past Carrick Hill and St. Patrick's Church in Donegal Street. We hope and pray that it will pass off peacefully. But prior to today's Apprentice Boys of Derry March, there has been a series of private meetings. In short, a respectful dialogue between the Apprentice Boys of Derry and the Carrick Hill residents. The fact that this has taken place is unprecedented 
in North Belfast. The fact that these talks were carried out in a positive and friendly atmosphere augurs well for the future. The fact that on this occasion full agreement on the terms and conditions of the parade, that is today's parade, was not achieved is a cautionary note. But what this dialogue highlights is the capacity for local residents and the loyal orders to reach agreement on contentious parades by themselves, free from political direction or interference, and outside the formal structure of the Parades Commission, where a determination can be properly and rightfully avoided. In short, local resolution to contentious parading. So although Black Saturday was a black day for North Belfast, at least as the weeks have passed from the tail end of the summer, some good has managed to emerge in our mild autumn. May that progress continue to bear fruit, because if it does, it could transform the wintry sectarian landscape of North Belfast. Mr. Chairman, I beg to move. Thank you, Oliver. You second the motion from the parliamentary group, Alex Alexander, please. Um, good morning, conference. It is now five times in 15 years that we've had a review of parading or the Parades Commission. And in the very near future, there is going to be a sixth review. What has been the intention and the ambition of some of those who have urged the review? It is to do down the Parades Commission on the one hand, and to undermine the need for respectful relations, direct, meaningful and genuine dialogue as the primary means to, to deal with the issue of contentious parades. On each of the previous five occasions conference, the SDLP has said that is not the way to go. We have said to the elements in Orangeism and Unionism, with their accomplices in Sinn Féin, that that is the not the way to go. And we say again, on the eve of the sixth review of parading and of the Parades Commission in the last 18 years, that is not the way to go. We believe that the Parades Commission is part of the solution. It is not the problem. And that in the absence of genuine, sustained, face-to-face -face dialogue leading to, leading to the agreement, you need a safety net. And that safety net is not decisions at a political or policing level. That is decisions taken by an independent third party body, a Parades Commission. So as we enter this further period of turbulence, around the issue of parading and the Parades Commission. Let us send again the message to the DUP and Orangeism. Are those elements still resistant to the Commission and to meaningful dialogue as the primary means to resolve uh, disputes? We say to them again that when we enter into these discussions, we will hold to the Parades Commission as a model going forward. We will hold to the safety that approach in the absence of local agreement. We will hold to a Parades Commission that does its work with better understanding of local conditions. And we will urge the Parades Commission to fully explore its authority in creating understanding around the parade tradition in this country. But we say to Sinn Féin, and we say to the DUP, we say to Mark McGuinness and to Peter Robinson, in the absence of local agreement, the authority of the Parades Commission has to prevail, otherwise we invite a free fall. In the last speaker in this section, Martin McCoy, Frank Dougat, and Mark. Thank you, Chair. Um, conference, my contribution to this is, is really to pay tribute to the work that Alden and Nicola have been doing on the ground in North Belfast. They have been there and, and have been willing to take calls, take meetings, uh, go and see any resident, be they from Ardoyne or be they a parishioner of St. Patrick's Church. Um, their commitment to the issue has been steadfast and completely unwavering, so I think we, we all owe them a, a deep debt of gratitude. 
And also we should pay tribute to our activists in North Belfast who are on the, the Crumlin Road at 6, 7, 8 o'clock in the morning, every, sometimes in summer, every week, um, to support residents in the face of extreme provocation. And who are there at St. Patrick's um, to support the Carrick Hill residents and the parishioners of St. Patrick's, again, in the face of some extreme provocation. In my experience, the situation on the ground in North Belfast has changed utterly over the last number of months. The SDLP is now leading on parades, as we should, should have always been doing. Um, we are now welcomed by residents where they now reject the hypocrisy of Sinn Féin. We are welcomed as activists and, and our MLAs and councillors are welcomed in great numbers to public meetings and we're welcomed to speak with residents at any point to help them with the difficulties that they're having. I, I have been a member of the party now for, for only about 18 months and previously had, had been to, to the, the areas of dispute in, in Ardoin and, and St. Patrick's. And the comments made to me at the time by members of Sinn Féin and, and other people that were there was that the SDLP was invisible on parading in North Belfast. Well, that's now not the case. We're there and we're there in numbers and we're supported by the residents there. Now, when, in, in the summer months when Carol Nikillen is no longer at Ardoin Parade, and Jerry Kelly isn't showing his face at Ardoin Parade, Alban is there constantly, Nicola is there constantly, and when they're sending people like Paul Maskey in their place, given that Paul now has a lot of free time on his hands, I suppose he has to be doing something with it, but they're sending these people, these people that don't live in the area, that don't represent the area, and we're there constantly as a source of support for those residents. It's, it's, it's a great thing to, to be a part of. We're standing shoulder to shoulder us there with open arms. And more than that now, because we're moving to being the only people holding unionist politicians who utterly abdicate their responsibility to account. These politicians who ignore and passively encourage breaches of parades commission determinations and breaches of the law. We are now the check against an abuse of human rights, the rights of the residents, and the abuses of the law and cynical politicking on the part of the DUP and Sinn Féin. We are the check against the whitewash on parading that will be carried out under the auspices of a closed DUP Sinn Féin group. They are invested in this stalemate on parading continuing because they gain an electoral mandate out of it as such. As long as parading continues to be an issue in North Belfast, they'll continue to, they'll continue these, these these sham fights with each other. They're working together, well they have been working together in a closed group, supposedly seeking a solution on parading, but we all know that that's not the case. They have too much to gain with a continued stalemate. So in tribute to Alban and Nicola and all our activists in North Belfast, I support the motion. Thank you very much. Okay, there's three motions in this section. Motion 46 is the primary motion. So Richard Taylor, we're going to take a vote. Those in favor of motion 46, please.